As I mentioned in my transmitter video, I want to now move on to a full transceiver uh, as my next project. So let's have a quick look at uh, the block diagram that I've uh, created for that uh, transceiver. And just a quick note, um, I just recently moved to KiCad 6 uh, with this project. Um, it was high time I upgraded. So uh, the, the result is that if you want to look at these schematics with KiCad, you will need, you will need uh, version 6. Um, I will include a PDF in the repo uh, for those uh, people who don't use uh, KiCad uh, so you can see the schematics. So here's the block diagram and let me go through some of the high level components and as you can see there's a lot that's kind of familiar with the, the previous videos that I've done on the receiver and transmitter. But I'll go through the, uh, the components that we've uh, used before and then I'll uh, dig into a little more detail on the stuff that's changed. Uh, so down the bottom here we have a power supply that uh, um, has a 5 and 3.3 volt uh, output. Uh, the DSP engine is the same uh, that we used in the earlier videos. It's going to be an ESP32 uh, or an ESP32A1S, uh, depending on whether I'm on the breadboard uh, or, or on a PCB. Uh, it uh, talks to a local oscillator, which is uh, the same SI5351 local oscillator that we've seen many times before. Uh, we have the TALO detector and TALO encoder, and they're pretty much the same that we used before. The detector is used for receive, the encoder is used for transmit. We've got a microphone and audio amplifier for audio in and audio out respectively. And then over on the right hand side here you can see we've got the band pass filter, low pass filter and power amplifier. Uh, again that you saw in the uh, combination of the receiver and transmitter videos. So what's new on this? Well as you can see there's two major new components. There is an RF switch and an audio switch. And uh, when we're walking through the diagram, I'll just uh, sort of draw your attention to the legend here. So I've got uh, the pathways on receive and transmit called out uh, in different colors here. So the light green, light red and light blue uh, represent RF signals for receive, transmit and both respectively. And then the audio signals are darker green, dark red and dark blue for receive, transmit and both as well. It just uh, allows me to sort of easily describe the, the flow of signals. So anyway, let's go through that flow uh, on, the, uh, on the diagram and let's see how the switches work here. So we'll start with receive. So on receive, the uh, incoming signal first passes from the antenna through the BNC and then it's straight into the RF switch. And the RF switch will be configured for receive here. So the next step in the pathway is for that uh, uh, RF to flow in through in and out through the bandpass filter. Once it's flowed through the bandpass filter, it then flows through to the TALO detector. So again, we're, we're RF here. In the TALO detector, that RF is mixed with the local oscillator running at 0 and 90 degrees and that results in an audio I and Q signal uh, that, it, that is then output. That I and Q signal then flows into the audio switch and you can see here the audio switch is basically two double pole double throw switches uh, that are configured again by whether, whether the radio is in transmit or receive. So when the radio is in transmit, in L1 and in R1 are connected to in L and in R respectively. On transmit, it's uh, vice versa. So in L2 and in R2 are connected to in L and in R. So the audio I and Q signals on receive move through the audio switch and they're sent to the DSP engine which does its usual job of performing a phase shift of 90 degrees on one of the channels. Once that's done, the audio then passes out uh, through the, or back through the audio switch. And these two signals are actually identical uh, on receive. Um, but anyway, the uh, audio passes out through the audio switch and this time uh, the audio then moves out through to the audio amplifier through to speakers or headphones. So that's received. Let's have a look at the path on transmit. So on transmit, we start with the audio input from the microphone and the microphone preamplifier. That passes in through to the audio switch, and the audio switch this time is configured 
uh, for in L2 and in R2 to go to in L and in R respectively. That gets sent to the DSP engine. And again, we apply that uh, uh, zero and 90 degrees phase shift to the signal. And that results in an I and Q audio signal that gets sent back through the audio switch. And then this time the switch is configured to send the out to out L2 and out R2. The result is that at that audio signal gets sent to the Talo encoder where the audio I and Q signals are mixed with the local oscillator 0 and 90 degree signals, resulting in an RF signal with the unwanted sideband suppressed. That RF signal then passes through to the RF switch, which first sends the RF signal to the bandpass filter to remove those uh, unwanted harmonics that we saw in the, uh, uh, the transmitter video earlier. And then the switch routes the uh, result to the power amplifier and then on to the low pass filter for further harmonic removal. And then finally the signal gets sent out through the antenna and is transmitted. So there are two major com new components in, in, a, in the transceiver here. So we've got the RF switch and we've got the audio switch. Let's drill into a little bit more detail on the audio switch. So as I mentioned earlier, the audio switch is effectively a four pole double throw switch. So on transmit, you have these two lines connected to in left and in right. On receive, you have these two lines connected to in left and in right. And then similarly on the output side uh, for transmit, you have out L connected to out L and R to out R connected to these two lines. And on receive, you have out L and out R connected to these two lines. Note that some of these signals are mono only. For instance, this signal here is mono only. So to implement this, uh, I could have used a pair of uh, double pole, double throw uh, relays, but instead I've decided to use the FST 3257 two to one multiplexer demultiplexer, uh, which is a cousin of the uh, 3253 uh, four to one multiplexer demultiplexer that's used in the Talo detector and encoder. So let's move quickly over to the data sheet for the uh, FST uh, uh, 3257 and then see how it works. Okay, so here I am on the data sheet. Let's just scroll down to the uh, to the pinout so we can see how this works. So here's the here's the switch here in schematic form as well as pinout form. And effectively, uh, it's bidirectional, so you can either send a signal in this way and have it uh, either go to uh, from from one A to one uh, B one or one B two, or you can send the signal the other way from either from one B one one B two. Uh, either one of those signals goes to one A, and which path is uh, selected is controlled by this pin here, pin. Uh, pin 1 or pin S as it's called. And effectively, if pin S is logic level low, then A is connected to B1. Otherwise, it's connected to B2. So you can see here, this is kind of ideal for our purposes. Um, it's a fast electronic switch. Um, uh, it, it can deal with the uh, audio signals without any problem at all. And I don't have the additional complexity of, uh, of relays. So anyway, let's have a look at the uh, schematic uh, that I've implemented uh, for the audio switch and that's coming right up. Okay, let's drill into the audio switch and have a look at uh, the implementation here. And you can see here's the FST3257 in the middle and then we have the four independent uh, double throw switches right here. So you can see that, and, and as I mentioned earlier, they're bi-directional. So let's follow the, the signal path on taking in R1 and in R2 as an, as an example. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to bias the audio signals at, uh, at mid-rail around about two and a half volts here. So I've got a resistor divider on the, uh, on the single uh, output side here. But effectively, uh, wh when S is high, R2 is effectively going to be connected to R. So 2B2 is connected to 2A on uh, when S is high. Uh, when S is low, 
to B1 is going to, going to be connected to, uh, uh, to A. So that's basically how it works. I've got this together on a little board. So what I thought we'd do is uh, do a little bit of testing. Again, I've, I've never used this as an audio switch before. I, I, there may be some problems with it. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but what we're going to do is uh, move on to some testing. And I'm going to have two different test cases. The first test case is I'm going to have two separate signals coming in in R1 and in R2. And then I'm going to use TR to swap between those switches. I'm going to make sure that I don't have any bleed through of R1 into R2 or R2 into R1. So that's test one. Now test two, I'm going to input a signal in here, an audio signal in here, and then I'm going to use TR to direct that signal to either in R1 or in R2. And again, I'm going to make sure that we don't have any uh, any bleed through of the audio signals uh, through there. So anyway, that's uh, coming right up. Uh, we'll move over to the uh, breadboard and have a look uh, at the setup. Okay, so let's just uh, walk through the test setup here. So I'm injecting a one kilohertz tone right here, single channel, one volt peak to peak. And that's going into in R on the schematic of the FST3257. I've got an oscilloscope probe uh, on in R1 and in R2, and then I'm controlling the TR switch through, through this microcontroller here, which is alternatively pulling the TR switch high and then low. So what we should see is we should see that signal, that one kilohertz signal, alternatively on channel one of the scope and channel two of the scope. So it just should flip backwards and forwards. But the signal should be identical in both cases. So let's move up to the oscilloscope and have a look at that. Okay, so here we are on the oscilloscope and you can see we do have that one kilohertz uh, signal right here. Although the scope is having a bit of uh, trouble detecting the frequency because it's changing. And you can see it's alternating between the left and right channels. Um, so this is kind of what we want to see. Now one of the interesting things, let me just pan down to the, uh, to the circuit again so you can see that, is I had to actually put a, a pair of uh, 47K resistors on the output of NR1 and NR2. If I don't do that, let me just, uh, let me just pull those resistors out. Hold on a sec, I'll just, uh, I'll just stop here and uh, pull those resistors out. Okay, so I've pulled those resistors out and now I'm directly probing on uh, in R1, uh, in R2 and in uh, R1. If you have a look up on the oscilloscope, you'll see something interesting. So let me just uh, hit run stop there. Well, that didn't work. So you can see I'm actually getting some, without those 47K resistors on the output, I'm actually getting some bleed through into the other channel. Now, I'm not quite sure why that is. Uh, it could be because of the high impedance of the, uh, of the scope probes and that sort of very low leakage uh, current is coming through there. Um, the leakage current for, for the off switch, it didn't, doesn't actually state the impedance in the FST3257 uh, of the off switch. Uh, but it does have, I believe, one microamp of leakage current. Um, so that could be what that is. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll have to remember to make sure I terminate the output um, of, the, uh, of the switch with uh, uh, at least a 47K resistor. So anyway, what we'll move on to next is the test where we input two different signals on in R1 and in R2 uh, and sample the output at in R. So let me get that set up and come back. So let's again walk through the setup here. So now I'm injecting a one kilohertz tone into uh, channel one and a two kilohertz tone into channel two. And they're going into in R1 and in R2 respectively. I'm then, uh, I've got my oscilloscope probe attached to in R here. And so what we should see is as I alternate uh, TR between high and low, I should see it flip between the one kilohertz tone and the two kilohertz tone. So let's move up to the, uh, the oscilloscope and have a look at that. Bear with me. So there you can see indeed we are flipping between the one kilohertz tone and the two kilohertz tone. 
So that's working uh, as expected. Um, and interestingly, uh, let me just turn one of the channels off. Uh, so there, I've turned off the, uh, the the two kilohertz tone. You can see there's no uh, there's no bleed through into uh, uh, present there. I ha I don't have to terminate uh, in R like I had to terminate the in R one and in R two. So kind of interesting stuff. Uh, let me just turn channel two back on there. Um, so everything looks good. The switch seems to be uh, performing uh, as I expect. Uh, obviously, as I dive into this more, I might uh, might find some quirks. Uh, what I'm going to move on to now is just a quick walkthrough of the um, RF switch schematic, which uh, uh, I'll be using a pair of uh, double pole, double throw uh, relays. But anyway, that's coming right up. Okay, so we're back to the block diagram here, and here's the RF switch. So let's drill into that and have a look how it works. So let's take the receive case first. So uh, these relays are drawn, uh, this position is the receive position. Uh, so it's kind of convenient for the first walkthrough. So, um, so RF on receive will pass through the antenna. It will then pass uh, through both of these um, uh, relay switches here, which are joined together. It'll then go over to the other relay, which will send the incoming RF out to the bandpass filter. It'll uh, do its bandpass filtering, and then it'll come back in, and then it'll send the uh, incoming RF off to the TALO detector. So effectively, we've got it coming in through the antenna, going through the bandpass filter, and then through to the TALO detector, which is what we expect on, on the receive path. So now let's have a look what happens uh, on transmit. Okay, so on transmit, uh, the RF switch is directly after the TALO encoder. The first thing the TALO encoder does is it needs to uh, pass through the bandpass filter. So just imagine these switches are in their reverse position. So on transmit, we have the RF uh, coming in fr uh, from the TALO encoder. It then passes through the bandpass filter, comes out of the bandpass filter, goes into the PA, and then on the other side, it comes uh, from the LPF, so it's transit, transited through the PA, it's gone to the, the low-pass filter to remove those harmonics, and then it comes back from the low-pass filter, out through this uh, pair of connections here, and if you'll imagine this switch is in this position, it goes through to the antenna. So the pathway is as we did in the transmitter video, it goes first through the bandpass filter, then to the PA, then to the low pass filter, and finally out, out of the antenna. Okay, so here's the little uh, relays I plan to use here, and they're a little hard to uh, get a hold of. Um, these guys are little uh, Panasonic uh, clones that I picked up on uh, AliExpress, but uh, I have seen them used uh, they used, for instance, in the Magnus uh, radio that I built up a little while ago, um, and uh, that radio is a, a 10 to 15 watt radio, so I'm sure they'll be more than uh, satisfactory for, for my purposes. Uh, if not, I do have some higher power relays that I, uh, that I could use, um, but anyway, uh, this, this uh, relay will, will suit my purposes, I think. Now, as far as the board goes, uh, if you recall, this was my uh, board from the receiver video that I did uh, a little while ago. Uh, and I had the ES, uh, ESP32A1S sort of directly soldered to the board. I think what I'm going to do is create some little uh, adapter boards so I can actually, um, you know, have some header pins on this and be able to plug them into the board and... Uh, and not have to solder them directly to the board. Um, but anyway, uh, what I have to do next is uh, get the um, complete PCB for the uh, for the uh, transceiver radio uh, built. I've got most of the schematics done, uh, and they're up on the GitHub repo, which I'll provide a link to. Um, but I do need to, uh, you know. Uh, get this uh, sort of arranged on a PCB, and then I'll, I will definitely sort of print my own print. I'll create my own PCB. I wish I could print PCBs. That would be awesome. But anyway, I'll have to make my own PCB to uh, for the transceiver. Um, so what I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll pause this video here. Uh, I've got some work to do to uh, get the PCB together. Um, I'll come back when I have the PCB. Uh, pr produce another video on the transceiver when I've got the PCB together. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I've been looking forward to doing this for a while. So. Uh, uh, more to come. That's all for now. Bye-bye.